Hello everyone. Today let us study about the band structure of real semiconductors. Band structure or band diagrams means in a semiconductors how the valence band and conduction band are located we are going to study. Real semiconductors means we are considering some of the examples of semiconductors and then studying their corresponding band diagrams. So here we are going to take three examples that is gallium arsenide, silicon and germanium and going to study their corresponding band structures or band diagrams. So when we study about the band diagrams or band structures we can easily distinguish whether the semiconductor is direct band gap semiconductor or indirect band gap semiconductor. Direct band gap semiconductor means in the diagram itself we can see first diagram that is the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band are one above the other means the K value is going to remain same for both conduction band as well as valence band. So the transition of electrons from the valence band to the conduction band is very easy or it is a fundamental transition. If you go for the next is the indirect band gap semiconductor that is the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band are not one above the other. That is the K value for the top of the conduction band and the bottom top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band are different. So for the transition of electron to take place from valence band to the conduction band we need the momentum transfer and phonon is intermediating here so that the excitation of electron takes place. So in order to study all these type of transitions first we need to know what is the band structure of different types of semiconductors. So let's start. First let us study some details about the band structure or band diagrams. So in general we are going to construct a conduction band and a valence band in a parabolic nature. So along y-axis it is energy and along x-axis it is the wave vector k. So always a band structure or a band diagram is a E versus k diagram. What is the relation in between those two? E is equals to h cross square k square divided by 2 m star. k is nothing but the wave vector, m star is the effective mass. So here we can see E is directly proportional to k square. So if we are going to plot a graph we get the nature that is parabolic nature as we can see here. So conduction band as well as valence band the nature should be always parabolic. So let us study some of the details. So valence band when the temperature is absolute temperature that is at T is equals to 0 Kelvin, valence band is completely filled with electrons. That is the valence band is the highest occupied energy band. So what happens as the temperature increases? As temperature increases, electrons may jump from valence band to next higher band. Next higher band is nothing but the conduction band. So transition is going to take place. So when the transition takes place, the electrons which are present at the top of the valence band will jump to the bottom of the conduction band. So now the bottom of the conduction band will be populated by electrons and as the top of the valence band is vacated by the electrons, there will be holes present there. So top of the valence band will be populated by holes but both the bands are partly filled and therefore it is possible for conduction to take place when electric field is applied. So lower bands in valence band are filled by electrons and higher bands in conduction bands will be empty. So these lower valence bands and higher conduction bands do not contribute for conductivity. So next what is the nature of energy? 
with respect to conduction band. So, energy of conduction band can be given in the form of EC of K that is nothing but energy of conduction band as a function of wave vector. So, I have denoted in the diagram what actually is EC will be equal to EG plus H cross square K square divided by 2ME. So, here K is the wave vector, ME is the effective mass of electron. So, here generally we consider E is equals to 0 as the top of the valence band. So, after the valence band there is an energy gap and then the conduction band starts. That is why energy of conduction band is always the sum of energy gap and h cross square k square by 2 me. In the same way, if you are going to see the energy of valence band, it is given as Ev of k is equals to minus h cross square k square divided by 2 mh. mh is the effective mass of holes and minus sign indicates the inverted nature of the parabola here. So, always depending on the energy equations, we are going to draw the conduction band as well as valence band. And effective mass of electron, effective mass of holes and the energy gap are called as the band structure parameters. So, this is some detail about the band structure. So, now let us move on to the band structure, band diagram of gallium arsenide. So, band diagram. So, what is the nature of the band structure in case of gallium arsenide? So, diagram is clear here. So, gallium arsenide has a band structure close to the ideal one. Ideal band diagram we have already seen in our previous slide. So, it is almost similar and by looking at the band diagram only we can say it is a direct band gap semiconductor that is the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band are at same k values. So both are on the top of each other that is why it is a direct band gap semiconductor. The next point is its energy gap. Energy gap of gallium arsenide at 300 Kelvin is 1.43 electron volt. So, it is a semiconductor because we have seen in the general properties that is a semiconductor will be having energy gap less than 5 electron volt. Next, the nature of the conduction band. So, first conduction band has the minimum at origin that is at k is equals to 0. From the diagram we can see that the first conduction band is starting at k is equals to 0 and the higher conduction band is next on the right hand side and the next higher conduction band is on the left side which is denoted by x values. So, let us see what are the more details about the gallium arsenide band diagram. So, conduction band mainly have three minimas. First is primary value minima or value both the way we can call. So, primary value is nothing but gamma value. It is directed along 0, 0, 0 direction. Then comes the secondary value which is known as L value which is along 1, 0, 0 direction. Then the tertiary valley which is named as X valley which is the next higher conduction band is along or occurring along 111 direction. So, the nature of energy as a function of K in these valleys are going to vary. So, when you are considering the region close to the origin, the energy dependency is quadratic in nature which is E is directly proportional to K square that is E is equals to H cross square K square by 2 Me or Me star where the effective mass of electrons is equal to 0 0.072 into M naught. M naught is the rest mass of electron. So, from the diagram we can observe if you are considering the gamma valley 
the primary minima is occurring along 0 0 0 direction and it is having the parabolic nature means E is directly proportional to K square at origin or the only in the region which is close to origin and then it is going to deviate. Then the next higher minima is occurring along 1 0 0 direction that is the L valley. So again here near its neighborhood the energy dependence on K is quadratic that is again E is directly proportional to K square and it is represented by single effective mass that is Me is equals to 0.36 M0. So for higher K values that is as wave vector is going on increasing energy dependence is not quadratic in nature that is E is not directly proportional to K square which is evident from the band diagram itself only in the neighborhood of the valleys or the conduction bands we can observe the energy dependence as K square or quadratic. So if you compare the primary valley with the secondary valley, the effective mass of primary valley or effective mass of electron in the primary valley is less when compared to that of the effective mass of electron in secondary valley. Just by comparing the values also we can understand. So next if you go on to study the valence band. So all these details were about the conduction band. Then coming back to the valence band. So here we can explain about light hole and heavy hole and that will be based on the curvature of the bands. So we know that is E is equals to H cross square K square by 2 Me star or Me or M star that is the effective mass. So if you can just rearrange it you will get M star is equals to H cross square K square divided by 2e. If you take the derivative of it, you will have m star is equals to h cross square k square or h cross square into 2k divided by 2 d square by dk. Then again if you take the derivative, then your m star will be equal to here we are taking the derivative with respect to k will be equal to h cross square 2 2 is getting cancelled then differentiation of k will be again 1 divided by dou square e by dou k square. So this dou square e by dou k square is representing the curvature. So the dependence is inversely proportional that is curvature will be inversely proportional to effective mass. So effective mass will be inversely proportional to curvature. So, using the energy equation only we are finding out what is the curvature. That is curvature is nothing but d square e by dk square. So, as the curvature is increasing, effective mass is going to decrease. So, based on this we can define light hole as well as heavy hole. So, in the valence band we can see three valence bands which are close to each other and all the three are having different curvatures. So one is having a greater curvature and two are having lesser curvature. So based on that as M star is inversely proportional to curvature we can define two types of holes. One is a light hole and another one is a heavy hole. So this is the detail about the band diagram of gallium arsenide. So in the next session we will deal with the band diagram of silicon as well as germanium. So this is for today's session. Thank you.